Yeah, I'm going to show you on this. The cells actually self-organize in the very specific geometry of the structure of the vacuum and generates all of the complexity of a human being or anything else that it's building. Let me see if I can find it. Um, cell division. Here it is. Here is the cell dividing, generating perfect tetrahedrons. See? If the, if the first cell is, is divided in two, the, the first cell divides in two, makes two cells, right? And then as you go, these two cells divide in two again, that makes four cells. The four cells don't make a cube, they make a perfect tetrahedron, you see? And each of these cells will divide again, making another set of four, and these four will go in between and make the reverse tetrahedron. And they'll continue to grow from four to eight to 16 to 32 to 64. And it will not start to differentiate the cells until it gets to 64. It will say, you know, T cells or, or fundamental cells until it gets to 64. And then at 64, then it starts to make brain cells, heart cells, liver cells, and all sorts of other cells. So you all went through this very specific geometry to get here. You are an extension of space looking back at itself. That's the feedback of reality. That's what generates reality. You, the universe, experiencing itself, learning about itself. And that feedback between the internal and the external and the internal and the external is what drives the dynamics of all of the forces of the universe, which reduces in this view to only two forces, gravity and electromagnetism, the feedback between the two. No need for the strong and weak force anymore. Why? Because if you take this view, then subatomic particles are mini white hole black holes. <laughs> this is funny, and I'm going to finish on this. Just so you know, quantum physics is bunk. <laughs> okay, why? Because in the late 1800s, we figured out that atoms had electrons. When we discovered the electron, this crazy thing, this crazy little electron kept on going around in circles around the nuclei of an atom. You guys are doing okay? I'm going to finish on this before we go to lunch. This electron didn't stop spinning. If you take current conservation of energy as all, they're called natural law. They're the laws that were written by Newton, okay? The laws of entropy. The electron should radiate all its energy within seconds, mill milliseconds after the Big Bang, crash onto the nuclei, and all atoms should have been alienated. There should be no atoms in existence. 
So when they found the electron, negatively charged electron spinning around a, a positively charged nuclei, and it didn't slow down, actually the electron spins at near the speed of light, 99.999% the speed of light. Ain't slowing down neither. We haven't seen any of these electrons slow down. So that was a large conceptual problem when they discovered this. Well, instead of re-examining Newton's laws, they invented a new type of physics. They called it quantum physics. They said the first axiom of quantum physics is we don't care about causation. That's the first axiom of quantum physics. That means we don't care what's making this thing spin. We're going to avoid that whole problem by saying we don't care about it. And if we're asked about it, we're going to say go and see your priest or go to church or whatever. We don't answer that question. And they started from there and they said, okay, at this electron energy level, we'll call it quanta, and then we'll quantize for the next le electron level, and next, and, and they wrote the map and so that they could predict the first electron shell, the hydrogen atom, and then they ex approximated all the other atoms out of it. Oh my God. Never explaining why this thing is spinning and ain't slowing down. Okay. We'll see this afternoon why, well, we'll see why this is a problem. Well, actually, we'll see it now because otherwise this afternoon you won't be able to remember. But uh, basically, what happens is that is that, look at this statement. Newton's laws are co of conservation of energy. If a system does not interact with its environment in any way, that's how they all start, then certain mechanical properties of the system cannot change. The they are sometimes called content of constant of motion. These quantities are said to be conserved and the conservation laws which result can be considered to be the most fundamental principle of mechanics. They're called natural laws. In mechanics, examples of conserved quantities are energy, momentum, and angular momentum. These conservation laws are exact for an isolated system. All of our current physics is based on this. Nobody took the time to ask, what the heck is an isolated system? Open a physics book. and look up isolated system. An isolated system implies a collection of matter which does not interact with the rest of the universe at all. <laughs> and as far as we know, there are really no such system. <laughs> so now you have all our natural laws based on something that is not found in nature. <laughs> that is a big problem. And that is the reason why we haven't understood the electron and the atom. Because the electron and the atom and everything else in the universe all interrelate no such thing as isolated systems. 